here at the San Onofre State Beach, where you can see beachgoers, surfers, and even some dogs playing. But while you're here, you'll also be able to see the massive San Onofre Nuclear Generating Station. It's been out of use since 2013, but there are still over a thousand tons of spent nuclear waste here. And that has a lot of people in the area worried, like Oceanside resident Peter McBride. Nobody's talked about the half-life of the nuclear waste that's there. Some At a recent San Onofre community engagement panel, he and others said the canisters are too thin, and with the salt air, they'll corrode and break open. Some also say the rising ocean levels could smother the canisters in water. Other areas of the country face the same kind of irresponsibility with such a, such a potenti potentially disastrous material. And I, I'm worried about our children, my grandson. But how dangerous is this nuclear fuel? Randall Granis is the senior nuclear engineer at San Onofre. He says any danger would come right after the rods are removed from the reactor because they are extremely hot. That's why they're put in wet cooling ponds. After five years, we can basically, then we can transfer it into this uh, dry storage system. And that's adequate just using the natural convection to cool the fuel. Granis says vents help cool the spent fuel. But spent nuclear fuel is still highly radioactive, and some of that radiation travels. It can go through materials like aluminum and human beings, but can be stopped by concrete and steel. This radiation can take years to become less of a problem. So if you had no shielding between our fuel and yourself, it could be fatal, right, in a relatively short period of time. So it is important to maintain that shielding. Um, now, if you fast forward several hundred years from now, you can walk up to one of those fuel assemblies and for a short period of time and you'll be fine. But we can't fast forward, and that's why residents are worried. I still don't understand what's going on. What would happen if this shielding suddenly went away? There's a, a loaded canister inside of there about, uh, about four feet deep from this level here. Uh, we have this massive lid on here that's filled with concrete. This is the uh, inlet vent here. So the cool air comes in. Granis says the canisters are buried about 20 feet underground in a concrete pad with a 35,000 pound lid on top. But back in January, we interviewed physicist Tom English at the San Onofre State Beach. He's very skeptical this system could hold up in an ocean environment. That it'll be uh, about 100 feet from the, from the water and a few inches above the groundwater table, which is totally ridiculous. So what, what could happen is, uh, as the sea level rises, what will happen is the bottom of the containers will occur. Jim Conka, a nuclear waste storage consultant for SoCal Edison, says there's little risk of a breach. He was on the San Onofre tour. People are still very concerned about issues like the ocean being here. Um, in California, you know, we have wildfires. Uh, that, are, that happen pretty often, um, and some people have even brought up the concern of terrorism. So what do you say uh, to those people? Um, well, these are totally fireproof. I mean, fire is not going to do anything to this. Um, flooding isn't going to do anything, anything to this. Terrorism is the least issue, because these, each of these weighs 150 tons. It's not like you're going to pack back a pickup truck, cut through the fence, and throw this in the back of the truck and drive away. One other concern has been earthquakes. Yeah, the, these are, are rated for earthquakes. There's not much can happen to them. There's some concern about sea level rise. What do you think yeah. would happen here if well, It's going to take a long time for that sea level to rise anywhere near this. I also asked about corrosion. While we were at the plant, we saw rust on some of the metal. And rust causes metal to break apart. Conca says the fuel canisters are made of a special steel that resists rust. At the end of the tour, we even measured our clothing to check for radiation levels. We were fine. But to get a second opinion on SoCal Edison's claims, we spoke to Ted Quinn. He's the former president of the nonprofit American Nuclear Society. The NRC has stated that there is no credible accident that occur with our dry casks with the age of the fuel, which is older now. But he says there's a caveat. San Onofre wasn't built to store spent nuclear fuel in the long term. The role of San Onofre is done. Um, it no longer produces electricity. Uh, it's being taken down, and uh, the California Public Util Utility Commission oversees uh, the, fund, the funds for taking it down, and the only thing that will be left will be the canisters. 
and there's no reason for them to be there if the federal government fulfills their role. He says there have to be employees looking over the site for as long as the canisters are there. Back at San Onofre, Conca agreed, saying there needs to be permanent storage underground. And that's because, you know, I love the pyramids, they're great, but that's the only thing humans have made that lasted, you know, anything approaching geologic time. The federal government was supposed to provide a solution decades ago, but it still hasn't. So these nuclear experts say what's preventing a permanent, safer solution for San Onofre and plants around the country is less scientific and more political. Shalina Chatlani, KPBS News.